the sheer power of that voice gave me an insight into the magnitude of power that a singer holds in her voice the control she has over her expression showed me that you not only need to practice regularly but you also need to feel what you're singing and i can't tell you how honored i am and excited i am to invite shubha mudgal on stage She's been trained by some of the finest musicians and musicologists in India. She is the recipient of numerous awards including the Padma Shri from the Government of India in 2000, the Gold Plaque Award for Special Achievement in Music at Chicago International Film Festival and the Yash Bharti Samman from the Government of Uttar Pradesh in 2015. Friends, another round of applause for my idol please. Thank you. You'd like to talk here? Perfect. Namaskar and thank you Parvati for that very warm very lovely introduction thank you so much so my greetings and congratulations to the organizers of the rainbow literature festival and to all of you who have uh, gathered here to celebrate diversity and inclusivity i really firmly believe that in the current climate of violent sectarianism bigotry and illiberality the very attempt to create a space that celebrates diversity and inclusivity must be applauded and supported we're really at a dangerous point of time in the history of humankind where we must not only join hands to put an end to the severe wildfires the storms the heat waves and other consequences associated with climate change but we also desperately need to join hands and come together to reverse the effects of the widespread climate of violence hatred and injustice and inequality that many parts of the world including our beloved country are witnessing this is precisely why i offer my gratitude to the rainbow literature festival for creating a space where diversity is welcomed and celebrated not excluded and banished or segregated i'm also deeply grateful to have been included in this celebration of diversity and i'm certain that my good fortune stems from my enduring association with a magnificent and exemplary system of music one that so evocatively represents the composite and once inclusive culture of india so let me uh, move to the subject that i have been invited to speak on which is harmony and harmonizing harmony is of course integral to music making but i feel the need to speak about the significance of harmony specifically in the context of hindustani classical music which i have been studying for many many decades now to the best of my knowledge there is no exact equivalent of the word harmony in hindustani music but the term that comes closest to it is one that we heard devdas ji mention samvad um and which appears like a light motif in the complex universe of ragdhari music samvad denotes that harmonious dialoguing between two or more swaras uh, that could be played or sung either sequentially or in the case of instrumental music played simultaneously but more importantly the individual swaras talk to each other harmoniously and create a musically pleasing effect It is important to examine this term really carefully because it is loaded with ideas of far-reaching significance of immense value in today's world. Like most words, some too has more than one interpretation, more than one meaning, but it primarily denotes equality, the idea of being barabar or of being on level ground. It also denotes impartiality, nishpakshita, and it also denotes being non discriminatory bina bhed bhav ke vaad on the other hand also has different meanings and interpretations but also stands for dialoguing or talking together therefore when samvad is created in hindustani music there is a dialogue on equal terms between the participating swaras in today's india which is often top down authoritarian and majoritarian all voices are not equal and some of us are even accused of being seditious when we have the temerity to address our own elected representatives but let us come back to this fascinating principle of samvad abundantly used in ragdhari music 
Common examples include the principles on which instruments are tuned. The tanpura, for example, used as a drone for accompaniment to vocal and instrumental music is tuned so as to create samvad. The sympathetic strings of many instruments create samvad by resonating when the main strings are plucked or played. And the key swaras of the rags of Hindustani systems called vadi and samvadi swaras are also identified on the basis of their ability to dialogue with each other harmoniously. So each rag, broadly speaking, would contain one most significant swar called the vadi swar, a second deputy but equally important or samvadi swar. And all the other swars that are used in the rag would then be called anuvadi or companion swaras. But even more interestingly, there even exists the possibility of a vivadi swar. In the Hindustani music tradition, the term vivadi does not signify dispute, contention and controversy in the, con in the conventional sense. But on the contrary, it denotes a swar, the skillful use of which actually enhances the beauty of a rag despite its being dissonant. So vivad is welcomed in the Hindustani tradition. And that's what really I think is something that we need to keep reminding ourselves as practitioners of this art. And you could ask how is all this achieved? How is dissonance turned into melodic beauty? How does vivad turn into samvad in music? And I could end up trying to share definitions and terminology and concepts and jargon with you. But setting aside all the definitions and technical information, I would have to say that samvad cannot be achieved unless the participants in this effort are willing to listen to each other. And the mandate is not just to listen passively, but to listen with respect and due attention and perhaps agree to disagree. And it is the importance attached to the listening and taking note of other voices, their joys, sorrows, differences and polarities that makes Hindustani music such an important sy symbol of cultural harmony. So does this mean then that we can achieve harmony and peace and joy through making music and art uh, and listening to music and enjoying art alone? I'm afraid I would have to be honest and say no because that is far from the truth. In fact, at a time when many artists and creators of music and poetry, theatre and film are not just defending and endorsing violence and hate, but even actually actively encouraging lynching and cheering mob violence, we need to pause and think. The traditions of music and art that we revere, revere and love and practice may be based on the principles of samvad, and the music and poetry may themselves be liberating in principle, may have the power to transcend, but unless practiced with a sense of conviction, with the intent to transcend, with the deliberate intent to create samvad, to listen to others with due respect, there can be no hope for harmony for samvad. For dialogue to exist, all participants in the dialogue must be willing to listen and be ready to face dissent if need be in a civilized manner. There can be no dialogue if no one is willing to listen and is only hell-bent on proving their own supremacy. In the world of music too, hierarchies and inequalities exist that create discord, discontent and tensions. The classical arts in India have always held, incorrectly so, that their stature and status is that of a high and supposedly pure art, with other forms of music and dance being relegated to inferior positions. Within the classical arts too, there are claims that vocal music holds a higher stature than instrumental music and dance, and depending on who is taking the, cl taking the claim, um, the hierarchies are shuffled around. So if it's a vocalist who is staking the claim, they say vocal music is supreme. If it's an instrumentalist, they say instrumental music is supreme. Um, further, religion, parochial interests, caste, community, gender equality are all issues that plague the world of music too in India, as they do other sections of society. To try and sweep these issues under the carpet would really to be living in denial. These are complex issues that do not have a simple or quick solution. And perhaps the only way we can tackle them is to remind ourselves of the inherent principle of samvad that our music celebrates to discuss, listen, argue, welcome dissent, and of course, sing in these dark times of a future where diversity will be respected and the most marginalized and persecuted communities included so that they have their rightful place as equals in an inclusive society. I'd like to end by offering just a few lines, an extract of a song. Uh, again, it's from the Braj region that Devdaji referred to. And in fact, he made the suggestion that I should sing this. And I offer this particularly in the memory of my dear friend, 
Jeevi Sethi, um, who really was inclusive in a manner that none of us can be, even if we tried to. So in memory of Jeevi and in support of this wonderful work that all of you are doing, here are a few lines. <laughs> रसिया को नार बनाओ री रसिया को रसिया को नार बनाओ री रसिया को नाक बुलाक नयन बिच कजरा नाक बुलाक नयन बिच कजरा पगनु पुर पहनाओ री रसिया को रसिया को नार बनाओ री रसिया को थैंक यू